done some bad things, man. And you know what them bad things are? I've been taking a couple of W's recently. I had a bit of remorse and a bit of compassion. I was feeling to let someone else have it, but I'm ready to take another one. I'm ready. PAQ presents Slide Into My DMs. So welcome back to PAQ, I'm Elias, that's Dexter, that's Shaquille, and that's Danny. And we are a fashion show that drops videos every single Thursday. Sometimes we buy fake moustaches to impress American girls. Or to stalk people like Lucas and that. Annoyingly. <laughs> And sometimes, you know, our proportions of our clothes are not always right. It looks like Dexter was wearing the Nimbus cloud. <laughs> but either way, every week you're down for a good experience and a good ride, so make sure you stay locked. Bro, 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 it down, fam. Next step is to like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends and your fam. The first commenter on every video wins a little goodie bag. First comment on the last video was... So this is episode 50. I'm guessing now it's going to be a thing that every 50 episodes we now switch up the TV. And yeah, we've got this beautiful, bad, blue baby boy. <laughs> so this episode has been brought to you by Dr. Martins. Dr. Martins, Docs, DMs, whatever you want to call it. For this week's challenge, what we are doing is we are going out and we are styling an outfit based on a musical subculture. Discuss. Imagine me as a rock star, that's bare weird. Doc Martens go hand in hand with like music subcultures and music genres and there is such like a variety of styles that you can mix them with. They're basically just such a, an easy silhouette to go with anything. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is I guess the most like distance from my like style. So I feel like I'm gonna embrace this challenge by actually just getting myself real stuck in. Maybe not mods, but you know, something a bit cooler. Mod life. There's so many subcultures that kind of had their influence on docs. Dex fits into a lot of those subcultures, so I'm just trying to think what he'll actually like, want to follow through with. For you guys at home, Doc Martin have supplied us with some goodies to give you guys, so you guys need to stay till the end of the episode to figure out how to enter the competition. Enter the comp, you might win something, so stay tuned, fam. So what's up guys, Dr. Martin's episode. And what are we doing? Music subcultures. Design an outfit based around a subculture that Dr. Martin's had a big part of. When I was like 13, 14, I'd come to Camden and you know, you'd see like OG goths, people with gothic tendencies such as I, and like punks, like real punks. Obviously, I love Dr. Martin so much. Okay, Danny Lomas, we know that Dr. Martin's are your love. So I have 1461's in black, 1461's in red. We know that you was born wearing a pair of Dr. Martin's. I have the churches. Your first baby baby shoes were Doc Martens. The Adrians. You'll probably get married in Doc Martens. I have a white and purple sparkly there. But it's gonna be more odd seeing someone like me in Doc Martens, you know what I mean? So if I pull it off, it will pay off. Now obviously Danny's gonna do the whole mod thing. Obviously there's mod, but I feel like mod is just too obvious. So I thought, why not? Let me go toe to toe with the mod master himself. Actually, that's a pretty good name. The real Eminem. I think punk would be a really sick one to do. A few of my family are punks, like my auntie and uncle from Hulk. When it comes to Dexter, Dexter I've seen wearing Doc Martin black boots. You're probably thinking, yo, this guy's gonna do some gothic black stuff. Get Dexter will probably go goth. Oh my days, Dexter the same old. He's gonna go with a whole gothic style, Steve. So I don't know if he'll think of it as like too much of an obvious answer, so he won't want to do it. You're absolutely right. Yes, I am. I might even run into him here. He definitely loves going to Camden. Camden is basically a mecca for, you know, the strange and the twisted. Dex was told me we wanted to move here like a couple of days ago, so yeah. So Camden Market, very OG. Just gonna have a quick run around, see if anything catches my eye. So when it comes to my fit, which I'll be matching with my Doc Martens, I wanna go with a whole kind of glam feel, you know, jazz it up, take inspiration from people like David Bowie on some rock star-ish. I decided to come to the Camden store where you can actually customize your shoe. If you're wondering where we are, we are actually in an ex-punk squat house. So um, yeah, we'll be more punk than that. Obviously it's a bit a bit gentrified now. We've got, we got potted plants, we've got a foot on, we have white walls. Times are changing.
what we are doing today is all about this bad boy. It is a regular denim jacket, very clean, very, very normy, and I feel like um, at the end of today, it's gonna be very punk, anti-establishment, rebellious icon of sin. Now the music subculture that I picked is ska music. I'm Caribbean myself, I'm from Trinidad, but a lot of like the whole kind of like mod style and the whole kind of like rude boy kind of theme behind this whole thing started off in Jamaica. So I thought it'd be nice to go back to the roots of where it all started and, you know, pay homage, you know, to the OGs. You know what me see? The, the old, the, oh, I don't even know. I've come to West London, but I didn't come alone. I'm partnered up with Shaka. Thanks for coming through, bro. My name is Shaka Maido. I'm one half of Art Comes First. They've literally spearheaded the whole Rude Boy aesthetic. So I'm here to help my man Shaq to uh, get him into the Rude Boy outfit. They always say two Shakas are better than one. So we're going to see if that's true. So you brought me here to 282 Portobello Road. I need a suit, bro. So I'm in the Doc Martens store in Camden, the only store that you can actually customise the docks. So I'm going to be trying on a few different silhouettes to see what one I want to actually customise. So I've got the 1490s here. Jeez, these. The 1460s and the 1461s. No one can break these, man. They could survive a nuclear war. Wow. You definitely can't miss someone walking in docks. These drop nice with the trousers, I can't lie. I'm definitely gonna hopefully go with some baggy, like, loose trousers. I think it's, they sit nice on the crepe. This is like a nice crepe sitter. I know that's not someone that comes around to look after your crepes when you're not in. Apparently, if you tap Doc Martens three times, Danny appears. What's up, guys? Right now, I'm outside Sai Sai. I'm telling you, this is the OG hub. This is the place. The team at Sai Sai, they're actually gonna be taking some time out of their day to show me around and kind of give me some inspiration for my fit. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to lie, I want to rip it up a bit. Yeah. Like, distress yeah, yeah. it. Hi there, my name is Raquel. I work at Sai Sai Camden, and today I'm going to help Dexter to find some cool outfit. Bro, when I tell you what I'm going to do to this, I'm going to end it, fam. Thank you for having me down. I haven't seen this much black stuff since I left my bedroom. That was probably three hours ago. So how would you describe your style? I think for myself it's a lifestyle. I listen to different kind of music, rap and punk. But what people don't know is that usually punk before, you know, Tartan, Leopard Prince, yeah. used to be more into fetish, bondage wear, yes. PVC, latex, all this stuff. Love it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so I have brought some added extras, bunch of patches. I'm going to wean these out now. Because Misfit's very punk. Ramones are, Sex Pistols are, Rolling Stones are not very punk, um, Nirvana's not very punk, Led Zepp not very punk, and Kiss is not very punk, so. We have some zips, chains, we have some studs, we have more studs, and on camera right there, we have another stud. Studs everywhere. What I do have is the jacket and a knife. You think denim jacket are punks, you think sleeveless. I think it's just blunt, we just found it in the house. <laughs> We're in. So I've got one with spider webs, I've got a plain one, I've got a waistcoat. I want it to kind of hang and then when I distress it, it'll hang even more. It's just going to look crazy. I like this guy. Thank you. <laughs> trousers, let's go. Do you have like suit trousers? Yeah, we do. Do you have any like plain black just ones? Just black. Mm, no, they all have some sort of design on it. I wanted to do smart, but now the thing is when I look at the options, I want to throw it out the window. This is why I don't like to stick to one thing. Just do your own thing, don't stick to the picture. I'm sold. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't have any pants on. What if I don't have pants <laughs> you on? You can't. <laughs> I can't go home. Now I'm playing. I've got pants on. So how come you know so much about suiting, bro? I mean, I grew up around the era of all the good boy. Where does this go? Does this I go? think that's for women, actually, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> good boy culture is probably the first youth culture in Jamaica. Oh. Yo, yeah, I definitely have like a fat head fam. My head is wampus, bro. The inspiration around the subculture was based around kids on the streets. There was drugs, there was crime. But these kids wanted to look a certain way because they were inspired by gangster movies or whatever. And when they came to England and were able to inspire and kind of push that culture here as well. So the style and the music kind of went hand in hand. So yeah, what kind of patterns and colours? Because I know there's just so many different types and materials. What do you think is like the best one to go for? 
So I'm here with Keegan in the Camden Dock Martin store, ready to do some uh, customization on the docks. So this is where you get it done, basically, the only yeah. store, right? Only store, like in the UK, in the world, this is it. So I'm gonna go with a 1461 3 eye shoe. I think that is like low, clean, something I can pull off, I hope. So first of all, we're gonna choose like the leather that we're gonna make your 1461. Back then, we all knew what fabrication is. Like this, for instance, this is uh, a dog tooth. Yeah. And this is a tweed. So we've got like a few choices. We've got green smooth, we've got it in a classic 1460. That's really nice green actually. Mm -hmm. And then we've got navy, which okay. I'm not like super fan of because I'm wearing black. Yeah, it's hard Shout to match, it. yeah. <laughs> as far as styling, for tall people, peak lockers are usually nice. Yeah. You know, because it makes you look taller. I'm but, small. But you're, yeah, so we don't, <laughs> we don't have to worry about this. Okay, cool. <laughs> We got suede if you're feeling like adventurous, so white. Again, you can see that like it's super high maintenance to look after. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a greasy one, yeah. And then Ooh, we've got black. Black so pants. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's like luxe. I feel like I'm buying a carpet. <laughs> and like choosing what carpet samples I want. How tall are you? I'm six three. Yeah, I'm I'm about to be six one in, in two weeks. Just wait. Yeah, let's just, let me just see the, everything before I start making decisions, innit? Oh, oh okay. you look good already, wow. Hey. What was that? <laughs> it's a little bit too big for you, obviously. I'm looking at these images and I'm loving how this black, just the original black one is shining with the LLAs, but at the same time, the suede feels a little nice. I really like this with the white stitching. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with a black suede. Right now I'm at the stables. I'm going to be taking a right, literally right here, because I'm going to be checking out a couple of shops down this strip. So we are at the second spot now. We've just come from 282. Shaka has brought me to Adam of London on Portobello Road. So first of all, Adam, thank you for having us come down. You could see we had problems with the um, vintage pieces because they like bespoke for yeah. people back then. Adam's a legend. He want to be like, sort of like a real rude boy, sort of 70s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something that sits in between now and then. I hear you. Yeah. So I have done that. That has taken me half an hour to go through about three different decisions, ruin them all, and then even that I'm not even happy with. I just want to get into the, the big boy stuff. And I just feel like we need to actually go and physically mess it up instead of just sticking arts and crafts into it, because this, this isn't right, this isn't cool. Damn, this is stressful. It's not doing anything. Yo, this suit is fun. I'm so gassed, bro. This suit is so hard. Ooh, yeah, that's hard. Think about all your losses now, James. <laughs> <laughs> so all that has done has made this jacket smells like deodorant, which is definitely not what punk smell like. So it's time for the last stage, chemical warfare. I've never felt so confident in a suit in my life. This is mad. A really good suit can be better than sex, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a Christian. I don't even know what sex is. I'm satisfied. Yeah, this is it. So this morning we arrived at the punk squat, which turned out to not be too much of a punk squat. I could see why they got so much pent up anger and rage when the jackets don't take to anything. I know more about Dr. Martens than all these other boys. I know more about this subculture than all the other boys. So I need to prove that. I feel so confident. Like, yo, this, this suit is just so, yo, this is just mad. I cannot be taking the L on some six hour denim jacket flop. Oh my God. I, I haven't been this happy in ages. This is mad. I'm definitely gonna stick to another level with the styling, with the props, with the hair. Oh my God. I'm looking for every reason to go on a date. <laughs> we'll talk every reason. Even if it's just to go to the pet store, yo, let's make it a date, bro. Doc Martens have an insane history when it comes to music, especially the alternative scene. They have a boot room in Camden where they host gigs. This week's special judge is actually gonna be performing at one of them too. I wanna say a big, big thank you to Doc Martens for making it possible. We have styled the classic range to show you guys there's so many different ways you can rock it.
What's going on guys? I am Etta Bond. Welcome to our studio. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming down. Happy to be here. How's the challenge? How's it been going? It's been exciting. I think for me especially, like Doc Martens are definitely like the other spectrum of what I'm usually into in my style. So it's been good getting out of my comfort zone. So that's like, what's your relationship with Docs? I love Dr. Martens because I always feel powerful and strong like when I'm when I'm wearing them, but I can wear them with a dress as well, and make it look kind of cute. I've actually got a Doc Martin tattooed on my arm. So it's real love out here. Dex, you're up first, yeah? Let's see what you get. <laughs> Obviously, you guys know Dex better than I do. What are you kind of expecting him to come up with? Black. Oh, okay, the orange, orange laces. All right. I went to a place called Sai Sai and I spoke to one of the workers there and she was like, do you know what, my style is like all different interpretations of what I would say goth and punk is. And that got like my mind bubbling. With me, I never really wear suits or dress smart. Dex, I'm feeling it. Originally, I was going to wear a mesh tee underneath it, but I thought it was better topless. Always better topless. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think it's so sick. The orange laces, the accessories, your nails. Oh. It looks sick. I'll tell you what I would have liked to see though. I'd like to see like a choker and there'd be some like eye makeup. Do you know oh. what? For real, yeah. The reason why I didn't is because I thought if I'm wearing a suit, I wanted it to be subtle but clean. And I felt like I wanted you guys to pay attention to the details. You know, you did you and it, it looks sick. Thanks, Dex. That was great. <laughs> Danny, you go next. Yep, sweet. sweet. Oi, oi. No! I don't know if I like this. <laughs> so this was a plain denim jacket. I went full like punk DIY in it. Try going with a knife, didn't do anything. It's not even doing that either. How did they do it? Just use a cheese grater and put it in a washing machine. That's not very punk. Punks don't grate cheese. Obviously. <laughs> when we use the uh, like the homemade flamethrower. <laughs> oh! Let <laughs> me jump so bad. All it did is make like the edges go a bit brown and that was it. It's almost got a nice creme brulee effect. So then we bleached it as well. Jacket's yeah. invincible. It's genuinely indestructible. <laughs> so you guys saw my process of trying to batter it originally. <laughs> But you didn't get to see the, the customization process after that, which was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, you know what? The jacket is sick, but I cannot get my head around these trousers. The trousers were my fave. I'm really messing with the trousers. I really like them. There was a couple bits that kind of felt like not so authentic to me, like kind of new badges. It looks like a shop bought thing yeah. when I see that. I feel like it's like a fashion twist on yeah. like on punk. It's like a it's a high end twist on punk. It showed the genre of music very well. I think overall, Danny done pretty good. Shaka, go away! No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Please, please, will you go and get ready? Yes. Thanks very much. Do you know how mad this is, bro? Yo, I don't know what my guy's doing. This guy's swaying. And this little guy, we're gonna call Herbert. Oh my God, if you see the way this guy's walking, it's a bit mad, can't lie. Ooh. Hello, mate. You look like a pimp. You smell good too. Natural scent. <laughs> my whole steez was actually, you said scar music. Oh, look, he's sniffing his butt. And yeah, I got to meet up with Shaka from Art Comes First. And he was giving me a whole load of insight on like, you know, the whole Rude Boy era. Me being Caribbean as well, I thought it was like two to home. So I wanted to touch on that. The two-tone suit was sick. And they told me that this is how they would wear it back in the day, the mods as well. When I went to Labbrook Grove, it was so sick being able to, you know, Yes, it was good, wasn't it? I don't know what these hats are called. Hawk pie hats. I'm pescatarian, but... Yeah, I love it, man. It's really cool. I like that you've sort of 
delve into the history. I love it. I think um, Adam of London is a sick shot. The only thing I'd say is that I would like to see a bit of white sock and a little bit more of like a, a trouser break. See, every rude boy needs a personal Danny in his pocket. <laughs> as a Caribbean boy as well, like staying true to your roots in a sense and bringing it to a challenge, I think that's sick. And I think it's important as well, man, especially for people of Caribbean descent. It's important for us to, you know, understand our roots fully. Ellis, it's your time. Let's go. Mr. Riyadi decided to come out, didn't he, Herbert? And he was wearing, well, what an Astro Boy would wear. <laughs> which is utter nonsense. My whole inspiration basically for this outfit is David Bowie, you know what I mean? Him as an individual was like so forward thinking with his fashion. So of course I had the Doc Martens customised, very simple, very sleek. So basically I just got black suede docks. Got the welt changed to white and then the black uh, stitching and then I just got some 3M laces as well which are very subtle. Back to he went and customised his own like docks to how he wants them to be, it makes it even more personal. I really like it, it's something really different. I don't. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> no. Do you hate it? I hate it. It's something that just doesn't work. Maybe it wasn't so obvious what his subculture was. Half Lenny Kravitz, half mum shopping in Monsoon. <laughs> I don't think this is jiggy. You've done something new, but I know you would be comfortable wearing this. And although Ellis' style is sometimes an acquired taste, the fact that you feel comfortable enough to wear Doc Martens and jogging bottoms is not something that these men here would be considering. I feel like he represented what this generation would probably try to do, which is to mix up everything and come up with a whole new style. I want to find it cool, but I just can't. But in terms of a music genre, I had no idea what he was doing. Well, you guys all looking like a super band right now. <laughs> I really honestly love what all of you guys have done with it. Elias. I mean, there was a bit of controversy with the reactions, but it's so effortless. Like, your outfit feels mad effortless. Danny. The badges were throwing me off a bit, but I'm really feeling the trousers. I think you nailed it with those ones. Dex. I like the naked chest situation we've got going on here. Shaq, I love that you sort of like, yeah, went through the history of it and I don't know, you're making me feel like I'm in a time machine slightly <laughs> and it's, it's pretty cool. So I'm still kind of making my decision now. Uh, the winner that I am going to pick for this extremely incredible Dr. Martin's challenge is... So close. <laughs> it is so close. Do you know what? I'm gonna go with Shaq. I'm gonna go with oh. you, Shaq. Oh, wow. no, 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 no. To win this week's competition, comment below who you think should have won. The winners will be picked at random. So good luck to everyone at home. This has been sliding to my DMs like Herbert did. Obviously, man sent me that young DM how to respond. And yeah, we'll see you guys next week.